is you can start on it already. You just uh, check which team is which number. One one. One one. one. Sorry, you one one three? Yes. And you draw. Can I start? All right, so thank you for an audible. Yes. All right, so thank you for meeting us at the table today. And before we begin, uh, can we just have a quick round of introductions, if that's okay for you? Yeah, sure. I am Sarah Knight, the founder of Light Sky Private Limited. My preferred pronouns are her and she, and you may refer to me as Sarah Strabi, thank you for the presentation. Good afternoon, I'm Ben Walters. I'm the counsel for Light AI. Nice to meet you. Good afternoon, my name is Bella. Please feel free to refer me by my first name, Bella, and I'm the CEO at AP. Hello everyone, um, my name is Rita Patel and I will be serving as the counsel for today for my client. Uh, I think we should begin with briefing each other up because we're meeting uh, with each other after a long time. So sure. if you could just, if you want to go first. Sure. So before addressing the elephant in the room, I would like to appreciate both of you for taking our time to this negotiation session. I feel humbled to have you and your financial expertise with us at Life AI Private Limited. And you taking out the time to consider the dynamics of this relationship is extremely assuring. You know, I am a dropout biomedical student from the University of Oxford. And when I dropped out of college, I am an ardent follower of Steve Jobs. When I dropped out of college, I had a vision. A vision of providing easy healthcare to the masses through the use of easy technology. And you may know that LA's cloud patch is one of the many inventions that we intend to provide in this regard. Unlike conventional glucose tests, this patch measures blood glucose levels through the skin using sensors. And as I mentioned, this is one of the many inventions that we intend to take forward, not only to provide easy and accessible healthcare, but will also be in line with sustainable development and our ESG standards. You know, LA is not incentivized by generating profits which is extremely manifested by the fact that the profits we generate from the cloud patch have been capped at a mere 15%. And we've offered voluntarily for charitable organizations to use this device free of cost. But what is also true is that there requires huge sums of money and capital investment for the development of these projects. This is where a company with extreme financial expertise like yours becomes instrumental to a company like ours. I'm thankful to have you and your expertise in financial management on board with us. And I hope that we can capitalize on this opportunity together. I would like my counsel, Mr. Ben Walters, to kindly highlight the issues that lie at the heart of our concern. Definitely. Thank you, Ms. Nair. So at the very outset, I would like to thank you for assembling for this particular negotiation. I firmly believe that we will be able to come up with a workable solution, which is not only in the interest of both the parties, but also in line with what these companies are seeking to adapt to in the larger scheme of things. With that being said, I just would like to clarify my authority here as a counsel. I'm here purely in advisory capacity, primarily dealing with the semantics of the modalities of the offers which will come up in the due course of the submission, uh, negotiation. My client here holds the absolute and unqualified authority to accept and reject offers. And uh, another thing is, which I feel is that, and I'm sure my friend on the other side of the spectrum will agree with me on this, that since this is a negotiation, so we'll try to keep the legal nitty-gritties and modalities out of the process. And I also believe that rather than dwelling upon each other's shortcomings or faults, we should treat it as an avenue by virtue of which we can maximize the interest of both the parties. Lastly, as told by Ms. Knight, I will lay down the agenda and the things which we would like to discuss during the course of the negotiation. So in the very beginning, what I'm seeking to do is to understand where you're coming from. First of all, I want to understand what are your practices, what are your aspirations and visions so that we enter into an agreement so that you also come on board with Life AI as an investor. So we want to understand your position, first of all. And then we can definitely talk about the elephants in the room and so far as patent rights are concerned, the management and the control is concerned. We can also talk about the exclusivity agreement which you are keen on in the due course of things. So we can talk about that. 
So rest assured, I just want to tell you that we are not here merely to assert, but also to understand your perspective. Thank you. Absolutely. That was uh, indeed, you know, that made me feel very homely and it does create a very calm atmosphere for the negotiations here today. As mentioned, my name is Bella and I am the CEO of Admiral Pharmaceuticals. <laughs> so uh, it was it was truly inspiring to see from what Sierra has done with life care. It's truly inspirational and motivational at the same time to many students out there. And in fact, as you mentioned, uh, even the cloud patch that you have invented is analogous to the iPhone 14 of the 20th century in the pharmaceutical industry, so I'd like to mention. And I would particularly like to mention that because, say, as I've been in the pharmaceutical industry for such a long time, we do see startups that come and go everywhere. It's just a bubble of startups that always and have always been there in the industry. But what we don't see is a particular product being so innovative, as well as having aspirational visions with human humanitarian aid as well in its one as one of its core principles. This is something that's a rare sight to see. And when uh, my counsel and I had come across uh, your company, we were, in fact, very fascinated about it and wanted to know more. And that's how we got into discussions with each other. And uh, as, as far as Mr. Uh, ben is concerned, yes, absolutely. Even we would like to hear from you. What are your particular concerns for the day? And, uh, and I truly believe that my counsel has also advised me to be completely transparent today in order to ensure that there are no other repercussions in the future or that we completely understand each other to the core so that uh, we, we can build uh, a great, uh, say, a great way together to the future. And as Ms. Sarah mentioned, it's not just the financial expertise that would uh, add on value in today's negotiation or to both of our companies is because as we are also in the pharma industry, we are not just another venture capital firm who is having immense financial expertise who would say lend you money at this moment, right? It, it is the, uh, say, the pharma synergies that we possess. Indeed, with, uh, say, with your product and, say, our money, I think we can be a totally industry disruptor is what we believe in. With that, I think I will give it over to my counsel to speak about the issue. Thank you so much, uh, Bella, and thank you for meeting us at the table today. It is it is indeed a pleasure to meet in person and understand each other better. Knowing that the past few years have been very difficult and in-person meetings have been very challenging. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, my name is Rita Patel, and I'll be acting as the counsel for my client, uh, Bella, today. Uh, I just want to establish that uh, I'm here to protect my client's interest in my best capacity and help her reach an uh, amicable settlement today. That being said, I am just in my advisory capacity, uh, just like uh, Mr. Ben over here. And I'm here to check the legal correctness and soundness of every agreement reached upon. And obviously, Bella would be having absolute authority to settle any concerns or making uh, any decisions on the table today. And we would be making personal notes, but we assure you that uh, they would be destroyed if you need them to be. So with this, we come to the table with uh, a few issues from our side as well. And uh, so we have we have grouped them for the sake of uh, a better structure. And firstly, there is one if there's one issue that is absolutely important for us, which is the foundation for the likelihood of this deal. It is uh, discussing about the patents. Second, uh, and then we would be having three types of issues: primary issues, secondary issues, and tertiary issues. Uh, under primary issues, uh, if I may state, we would have um, four sub issues. If you want me to state right now and say them right now, we can come back to the clarifications later. I think later works. All right. Okay. And in second, uh, so in primary issues, uh, we have these four issues that we'll discuss later. Secondary issues, we would like to discuss about the shareholders' rights. And uh, in tertiary issues, we would like to discuss about the future of the shareholding with respect uh, with respect to a AP in uh, your company. And with this, we really hope we get to dive deep into each other's interests and understand each other better, which was a collaborative um, way to uh, define the future relationship. We would love to hear from you. Definitely. As I mentioned at the beginning, those things are exactly what are on our agenda. So on a more fundamental aspect before we begin, we would just like to understand why uh, you want to invest in Life AI. What is your vision for investing in Life AI, given that you're also seeking management in terms of our company. 
we would just like to understand where you're coming from so that we can further proceed in a better manner during this negotiation and then definitely we can deal with the patent rights the shareholder rights as well during the subsequent course if you may absolutely uh, as i mentioned again when uh, it's you know a startup like la is a rare sight to see in this industry to be honest it's in fact it has uh, indeed been a revolutionary product with again a human aid in mind and it's indeed saving lives that itself you know constitutes a huge thing so when we saw a company like you we really felt that it resonates deeply with us that we too are a company who would want to say uh, come up with such a product but what what we thought was of is that why not invest in this era because than the product you know there are still say technicalities with the product with regards to the amount of accuracy that it has to come up with or uh, in order to be truly industry disruptor we believed in investing this era in 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 this era that she is she has been such a role model to many of them and also as to uh, what roads has she treaded on or what vision she has for you, for her own company and that was one of the major driving factors that led to our further investments in your company thank you ms bella uh, thank you for explaining this so beautifully and thank you for the enormous praise that you've been giving this, this gives me a sense of reassurance that the product that we've developed is actually reaching out to people and is actually turning out to be a success uh, we are extremely as we mentioned extremely grateful to you for agreeing to come to this negotiation and we would deliberate on all the issues in due course of time however i have one particular question for you as you must be aware that we are extremely dedicated towards the environmental sustainability and one of our core motives has been to maintain our esg reputation and to maintain our esg standard however it is absolute truism that your company has been involved in animal testing and there was a certain gas leak which led to a lot of news it was always or it was in the news it was viral and we would not like for this to be repeated and you know we are collaborating in Uh, the esg reputation is one of our strongest points it lies at the heart of our concern so i would like to know if you intend to continue with the animal testing part of your pharmaceutical experiments or do you wish to cease to cut or do you, do you wish to cease it because that is uh, extremely instrumental for us to know okay. uh, i think bella is the better person to answer sure uh, i think it's okay for her. yeah rita is the better <laughs> sure so we do understand that you have a very very important concern out there and we would definitely be looking forward to address that but as we mentioned the very foundation for the likelihood of the deal to happen for us is uh, the patent issue so if we we could just you know ask you a few clarification questions we can come to the main point later if we could just ask you a few questions and if you can answer that to us quickly we can then move forward so we it will be like you are paving a road for us to walk on with you in a collaborative manner if that's okay just a few questions uh, definitely i mean we have not expressed any uh, we have expressed our in willingness to answer all your questions but just uh, we had one simple question is the animal testing regime which was there in your company earlier is it still there we just have a fundamental question because you're well aware about our company about the articles of association of our company how these esg practices are so embedded in our company that anything which goes against that would essentially vitiate the very character and very essence of the particular company so that's one simple answer and then we can definitely move on to patent rights yeah uh, so if i may take that question yes. mr uh, ben yes. so uh, although you know we we did we used to have primitive means of techniques or uh, say testing of of the animal uh, and animal animal testing was one of them that was used prior but uh, what what one thing i can assure you is that it we have say cut down on that uh, immensely or say drastically based on that but say uh, you know a few things say such as uh, a, a new product that would come up and see our r&d team is continuously working on the same there would be times when a particular product might have to be tested in order to before before it's tested on a human being or whether it it goes through the approval process or any other means so only by that means by, by every means we would try to cut down on the same but say if there is a, and and we would look for other avenues or other means in order to test the same we are striving very hard towards the same but since you r and d processes do require us to do say an animal testing 
which might require, then I think we will have to delve into the brief. And, and yeah, that, that would be if, if that would answer your question. All right, Ms. Bella. Um, I am personally a huge pet lover and an animal lover. And it personally aches me to know that there are still companies who are testing on animals. It is extremely inhuman of us to think that human beings should not face the repercussions of a new technology, but animals can. This goes against the very sense of uh, what we stand for. And being a company which is invested in artificial intelligence and which is looking at new technology, I would like to assure you that we can together look for newer avenues wherein we can expect, we can look for better forms of experimenting wherein we do not use animals, uh, where we do not hurt animals, so to say. Uh, I believe that this will go a long way in sustaining, sustaining the environment and also protecting the animals. So what we need for you is to sign a memorandum of understanding with us in the regard that we will, whatever we do in our association together, whatever act is committed as uh, a collaboration of a AP and LA does not involve any animal testing. Uh, what would you like to say to that effect? Definitely, I think this uh, collaboration is something my client was mentioning to me before. He is always up for he's always up for a new collaborative approaches. But however, it again depends upon the likelihood of this deal, which is and as I mentioned earlier, if there is one condition that is the foundation for the likelihood of this deal is the patent issue. So if we can just uh, get some clarity on that, then we can move forward. Then we have an affirmative answer. Yeah. So we want Definitely. to collaborate with you. And so just a few more. Definitely. Yeah, and Definitely. just to just to add on to what yes. my counsel said, she uh, literally stole from my mouth as to what, mm -hmm. what I have to say. So uh, as I mentioned, only in say severe emergency situations wherein there is no other avenues to go for. Only in those times, say, we would resort to an animal testing. But say in, in every other avenue, we are looking for ways where we can minim minimize or completely eradicate animal testing. Because even we do believe that, uh, even we strongly resonate with what Ms. Uh, Sarah has, uh, her values and her business ethics that we have. But as you mentioned, you are uh, you have come up with artificial intelligence and other proprietary, uh, say, intellectual property would also be associated with the same of, say, the technology that would eradicate uh, or, or say that would act as a replacement to animal testing. So as th that would be connected to what my counsel said that we would want to say, uh, say look into the process of whether we, we, you have actually got the patents uh, registration documents or other associated documents for the intellectual yes. property. Yes, I will just briefly interject. Uh, our point with respect to animal testing is not only limited to our interest, but also to your interest in Toto. Because as you must be aware, because of only these practices, which has happened to your companies that your share price has substantively declined over time. So that has also happened on your end, right? And now that we're collaborating, we're also collaborating for the purpose that are your image, which is not that great, I would be perfectly candid about it. That also becomes better because that is what is on the agenda as well. So the question of image is also there. So I believe and I would persuade you to desist from such animal testing only to that limited aspect so that it will be in Absolutely. the interest of both the parties, Absolutely. not just us. Absolutely, Mr. Ben. And as I mentioned, yes. uh, only in, say, we, we would view, say, animal testing as the ultimate last resort because i think if we if we did sign a deal today and tomorrow there was another pandemic or touch world may not happen anything like that there would be another human uh, existential crisis that would say want us to come up with a technology that would indeed require us to have animal testing done in order to save human lives that is an extreme situation that we are looking forward to and only in those circumstances is where we would say cut down on animal uh, or is that we would use animal testing in the first place. And as you uh, mentioned that yeah, we are looking forward to have exchange of the expert synergies that we both have. And, and as Mr. Ben mentioned, although there have been rumors in the market about say what, what we resort to and what we have been and all, all the rest of the uh, say things that float in the market. One thing we can assure you is that this collaboration is a genuine one. It stems from the deep intent to indeed invest in Ms. Sierra and take this uh, take this joint efforts to another level. It's just not another, another greenwashing or an image clearing attempt by our side, in case you had any other uh, right. and, collaborations uh, as, regarding this. As my uh, client mentioned, uh, we are genuine. And uh, we want to build trust with you over this. 
but we also require uh, you to uh, be perfectly transparent with us as well. So if you could just, uh, I'm so sorry, circle back to the questions that we had in mind, that would be great. Definitely. Right. Just, just, just a moment. So I believe we have reached a meeting of minds with respect to animal testing. So just to summarize this concept there so that we can move to patent rights, just to summarize. So we reached a meeting of mind wherein I believe we can execute a memorandum of understanding wherein you agree that only in extreme cases, when it's a question of saving mankind and other things, you will uh, indulge in such a practice of animal testing. And thus, I believe we can execute the MOU to that effect. And then subsequently, yes, I'm ready to answer all your questions with respect to patent rights. So let's move on to that. What do you say about that? Very good. Yeah. So, okay. um, yeah, we can please go ahead with whatever questions you have. All right. Thank you. So, um, as we all know, um, we have been making constant communications with you regarding the patent uh, rights and regarding the patents, basically. And uh, LA has not been very uh, responsive to us, and we have not received those. Uh, we don't, we won't call it disclosures, but we have not received uh, communications from you regarding the same. So, if uh, we have a, but we just want to make you comfortable. So we have a few questions. We can just begin with that. Sure. So we just want to be perfectly candid here, as uh, you know, we are. We want to be. We want to make it transparent. So we just want to ask whether the the, the IP that you hold, the patents that you hold, are they disputed? No, the patents that we hold are not disputed. Uh, and I would like to come on board with you and tell you exactly the situation of the patents. So what, what, is hap what was happening inside AI was essentially that we were trying to make the cloud patch a more accurate and precise device. As of now, the cloud patch tests sugar to 0.1 millimoles per liter, which is already an accurate figure as compared to other conventional uh, glucose measuring systems. But we were trying to make it more accurate to the effect that it would reach sugar levels at 0.01 millimoles per liter. We were trying that before we register for a patent, this gets done with so that our readings are more accurate and more precise. But our scientist has just told us this might take a considerable amount of time, which is why we have applied for the patents. And to come clean and to come on board with terms with you, we are willing to show you the documents wherein we have applied and we have, we have applied for the registration of patents. We have not received the registration as of yet, but no, the patents are not disputed. This is an absolutely genuine invention, and uh, as soon as the patents come through, we will be ready to share with you the details. Uh, so we just okay. We do understand that uh, you have absolutely clarified regarding the patent part, yes. but now we have another aspect of it, which is the document part. So what is the likelihood of us receiving the documents? Will we be receiving the documents uh, by the end of this deal making? Yes, so as I was saying that we are perfectly confident that the registration process will go through as soon as possible, whenever it gets done. Although, the, as she mentioned, that the registration is in process, we'll share with you all the documents we have with respect to registration. It's in the process, as in when we receive the registration, we'll let you know. We are totally above board in this. We are perfectly being candid with you, and there is no this question of dispute whatsoever. Okay. So we're willing to share that with so, you. Okay. So are you willing to share the preliminary documents with us? With respect to uh, okay. the, the, the patents, that the patents have been registered. The process registered. of registration, whatever documents, preliminary documents. Yes, uh, apart from the documents which are not sensitive in nature, we are willing to share with you everything. And the fact that they are in the process of registration and they will be registered, we assure you that they will be registered. As soon as they are done, we'll share the same with you as well. Definitely. We do understand. But uh, just yes. to clarify, yes. what do you mean by sensitive uh, information? I believe all the documents which we have, since we have already registered for the particular patient, right. we will share those documents with you. We want to be above board. We don't want to be um, you know, shady or anything. We want to be totally above board. With you. So we'll share with you all the documents which we have. Okay. That'll be done. That's not an issue. No what time will it be done? I'm so sorry. I just want to be very clear. So the documents of registration and the process and the fact that they're in the process of registration will be shared with you as as soon as possible by the end of the negotiation that they are in process because as we mentioned they are in process they're not being registered as of yet. So we'll share them with you. Not no difficult. And the issue here is the device like cloud patch is extremely novel to the market and it will take a long time to get registered is what I believe because such kind of technology has never been introduced before. So even we cannot push the authorities a little too much, and we will wait for them to register the device, and as soon as it is done, we will let you. Know. 
Yes. Absolutely. Uh, and thank you, thank you for that clarification. It clears a lot of air, uh, you know, bits, uh, regarding the patent documents. Uh, another thing, another query I had regarding that, that so since we have just filed uh, our patents regarding this case, is that what is the likelihood that we'll be given the patent? How how novel is it? I, I do understand that it's completely novel and it has just blown the entire market by this one. But I just want to hear from the horses mouth. I just want to hear from Ms. Sarah as to how how confident are you about the approval of the payment? I am extremely confident about the approval of this payment. I have put in all my heart and soul in the invention of this particular cloud patch. And uh, I am 100% sure that we will be receiving the payment. Again, when is something that is out of my hands. But we would be receiving it for sure is my work. Yes, we are perfectly confident about yes. that, that we will be receiving the payment. So just to reframe your confidence, uh, would we, uh, if we may, if we may ask uh, for a warranty from Mr. Ben and Ms. Sierra for the sake, it would help us and our shareholders honestly, because our shareholders are sitting back uh, behind us and they uh, honestly they have a lot of cloud around in this whole process. So just for the sake of them and you know cementing our trust. Would we be receiving any And uh, yeah, yeah, just to uh, uh, segue away from what my uh, counsel mentioned, is that, uh, you know, investments, especially in the pharma industry, require, say, huge sums first in the, in the first place because of the levels of R&D one has to take care. And I think Ms. Yara will uh, resonate on the same. So when, as a company, we tell our shareholders that we are pouring our money into this one particular company, and this is the likelihood of they getting this, or, or anything of that sort. They believe that it's not our money, it, it is the shareholder's money that's getting invested in every every nook and corner or, or in every investment that we make. So we will also be answerable back to our shareholders. So we wanted to take back something tangible to them. So that is the reason we asked for it. Right, right. We totally understand. Even we are a company and we operate with shareholders. So we understand that you are accountable to them. As regards the warranty process concerned, I think my counsel will be able to help me better on this. Yes, uh, since it deals with the technical aspect, if I may just interject for a couple of moments. So with respect to your concerns, with respect to whether or not we will receive a patent or not, as I mentioned earlier, we are extremely confident that we will. However, if you won't like to take the word of mouth from us, we are willing to add a representation and warranty clause and a share purchase agreement and whatever we agree on. We are willing to agree to the representation of warranties clause. However, with one small caveat that there's a difficulty with respect to when we, the, that patent process will go through because that is out of our hands. It's an extremely tedious process. You know how long a patent registration and everything takes. So with the question of when, I don't think we're in a position to answer as of this moment. However, with respect to whether or not it will be registered, we are willing to have, offer a representation and warranty clause in the share purchase agreement. What do you think about that? Also, if I may ask one small clarification, what, what do you exactly want the, want the warranty clause to be? Is it regarding the fact that we will have patent rights or is it about the fact that the pa patent rights will be passed on? I just so, wanted to make it extremely clear. Right. Thank you so much, Sina. Uh, it would be a very dynamic warranty. If, uh, if, if from what we believe, it would also uh, be regarding whether you own the true patent or not. It would be regarding whether they are disputed or not. It would be regarding the originality of it and the nitty gritties of it, which I think Ben and I can discuss later. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Just in principle, sure. we want it. Yes, I think if sure. the patent goes through, then all these things are taken care of, whether okay. or not it's original or not. All that thing is taken care of. It goes through or if it's awarded to us. I think that is taken care of. And Absolutely. I think if uh, we're done with the patent aspect, I think we have dealt with the nitty gritties and if I may just summarize, if you would allow me a couple of moments. So what we've discussed is that as we've come above board and mentioned that the registration is still in process. Uh -huh. However, the fact is that we're confident that it will go through and we're willing to go to the extent of offering a representation and warranties clause. However, we give no guarantee whatsoever as to when the patent will go through because that is outside of our hands and there's a difficulty there on our end. So what, whatever the best we can offer, we're trying to offer that. Yeah, uh, but but again, as uh, you mentioned, say even in the pharma industry, it, I do understand that unreasonable delays is something that both parties cannot accept because it would be uh, self-sabotaging for you as well as 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 well as us. Because and why they are particularly concerned about the intellectual property is that I think and I think Sierra can uh, resonate with me here is that uh, something like ripoffs in the pharma industry comes out very fast. 
right? And that is the reason we wanted to ensure that what we are getting into is absolutely protected. And even if a third party company comes up with the same, we do have enough backing in order to go and uh, say get everything clear. Sure, that I would completely understand your concern. And I think if the patent issue is sorted with, can we move to the next agenda? What is next on the list? Yes, so the next would be the management and control. If that was also not your agenda, I noticed. So let's discuss <laughs> something which is on both our common agenda. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, yes. So in that, say first, can we discuss about the constitution of the board? Sure. sure. Of the board. Works. Absolutely. So uh, as Miss I completely as as much as I love you for who you are and what uh, say for the company that you have built in the, uh, in, in in such a short span of time as well. Is that, but one thing that uh, has come in the news even, and even in the recent past is that although you are, say, a great innovator, uh, maybe your financial, maybe your financial, uh, say, acumen is not uh, to, to that uh, extent, you know, favorable to you as, uh, is not that great to you as than when you are an innovator. So, uh, as I mentioned, even in the starting that it is always beneficial for both the parties to play out to their strengths and we do think that we can help you uh, and give you a helping hand regarding the same because uh, in the recent past we heard that where we could uh, where we could get a uh, class uh, sorry tax clearance or the tax relief for having taken r and uh, attempts in the pharma industry of a substantial amount of uh, two uh, two hundred two lakhs fifty thousand uh, uh, to 250,000 uh, great British pound. I do think that uh, you know missing out on such uh, issues or or such financial aspects can have a ripple effect on the investments that we have made in the venture also. So we wanted to lend out a helping hand regarding the same. And since, as you mentioned, the one thing that you would be looking forward in us is the financial expertise. That, uh, so financial expertise would not just be limited to say lending out your money. It would also encompass say uh, giving financial advice or say looking into the business growth and the business plan of uh, LA as well. So this is something that we wanted to help you out with. Right. So, okay. All right, Ms. Uh, I completely agree with you. I'm not really a person with financial acumen when it comes to business acumen. I can probably play with. You know, the technology, but not when it comes to financial acumen, did not really catch me off guard there. So I was I was about to make this proposal to you that we I discussed with my counsel regarding the nitty gritties of changing you know the composition of the board of directors, and we are open to offering you a position of one of one director of having one director on our board because as we totally resonate with you, we do need expertise on financial management. Have been talking about this since, since I opened my statement. So we do need advice in the financial sector and uh, we would be open to having one member from the uh, company on board with us. However, we would like to uh, bring it to terms that we would like for a person who has a substantial experience in the financing division of your company of about 20 years that we do not commit the same calls that we have so we do not end up paying more taxes than we require to. If my answer would be explain the legal aspect yes. of all of this. So first of all, uh, let me start by saying we do actually commend your financial management and we do recognize the fact that you're not only here for the financial management, you also want, and I quote, uh, you want to take part in the financial advice, the business planning, among other things. I think we will be amenable to that once you have a character on the board and which we are willing, uh, a, position, uh, which we are, a position which we are willing to offer to you, given that we only have three members in the board. So this is the kind of position which we are willing to offer you. However, if I may make it also perfectly clear that given the fact that we have articles of association which are so embedded in the ESG policies, in the policies of uh, you know making sure that our policies are environment friendly, making sure that our policies are there for the people who belong to the lowest strata of the society, for those who are the most disadvantaged. So I think that is something which is very non-negotiable to us by virtue of being a part of our articles of association. So I think this is something which we cannot budge on. However, in terms of financial advice and business plans, we all can have and we rather encourage your expertise on that. So this is what we are making clear and what we are offering. Uh, absolutely. And I highly commend both of your efforts in, uh, say, 
in, in making an offer on the table today regarding the same. So uh, one thing, so what we decided is that in order to be more comprehensive and give our best expertise even on board with you both, uh, what we decided is that we can have a dual offer, which my counsel can further expand on. Um, by dual offer, um, if I could just take a moment with my client, sure, just sure. to be clear about what um, she expects me to show. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um, so. I got, uh, thank you for uh, letting me hear a uh, small doubt that I had. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think it's a great idea that you pay for this position of responsibility in the board of directors. Uh, but what we also, you know, to help you facilitate this offer better, to, you know, choose a collaborative way that, you know, facilitates and strengthens this offer even more. Uh, we have another uh, small offer to make, just uh, in, uh, let's say, it, it, that this offer will be conjoined to the offer that you made. So you offered us a seat in the board of directors, one seat in the board of directors. What we would also like to have with that is a subcommittee that deals with uh, financial and risk management. Because uh, the risks are, uh, I think, uh, Bella knows better that risks are a part and parcel of business, especially pharma businesses. And uh, Having a subcommittee, a designated subcommittee where, you know, there's a collaborative approach and where uh, our expert synergies when it comes to management and finance would uh, merge with your uh, vision for taking this brand forward. This subcommittee would help us maneuver through uh, any financial hard waters or any risky muddy waters that would uh, arise. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about that? Uh, if I can, and yeah, just to clarify what my cousin said, this would be independent of, say, the board of directors. Yes. Oh, yeah. Since you yeah. just mentioned the joint, joint offer, you mentioned it will be an independent offer. Could you please give me clarity? So, independent, uh, as in I mentioned that, uh, is that this would be this would be co joint as in it would be, it was segueing from what you had mentioned that or this could be also a potential offer, is what you mentioned. and. Independent, as in I mentioned that this subcommittee is not inclusive of the one board of director that additional board of, board of director that we have. No, in the the is what we need. All right. So if I may ask, what will be the constitution of the subcommittee? Uh, I think uh, we are just here for um, you know an in principle agreement. I mean, both uh, companies would obviously be involved. We just want our uh, say to be involved as well when it comes to the subcommittee. So how about um, and, and I think in the subcommittee, as in we will be providing the financial expertise and the financial assistance required for uh, for the uh, for the betterment of LA. Why we believe a subcommittee would be better than one board of directors is that the board in general would be dealing with a lot of other stuff that would not uh, exactly be financial, right? It could be regarding uh, another novel aspect that has come up, another product launch or another new jurisdiction that we are planning to expand together or anything of that sort. But a subcommittee would say, look into the business plans or it could uh, say, look into where, where we are losing costs and where we can further invest or is there a new facility that we can come up that can help us cut down costs or uh, all the financial aspects wherein we can optimize and say have better synergies in, in the same and by financial expertise I just don't mean uh, yeah, yeah. a person who knows numbers a person who knows numbers in the pharma industry is someone who would who would be looking forward on the subcommittee. Right. I would like to uh, answer to your I would like to answer to your proposal and the first part I would like to answer with regard to the board of directors as of now we're currently looking for a member to be on the board who can advise us as regards the financial matters of the company is concerned. And uh, a subcommittee is something that we can discuss eventually, and I would like my counsel to highlight the same after I'm done addressing this. But as of now, the director that we want in the on the board has to be associated with the financial aspects of the industry, and not the business aspects of the industry per se. Because as of now, we feel that our business is pretty solidified, and although we are associating, we do not feel the need for a director, uh, which in uh, which is you know uh, associated with business to be on the board. Uh, a person who has expertise in financial management and whatever the risks part that you mentioned is required. 
And after having a director on the board, what do you feel, Mr. Ben? Do you, do you still feel the need for a subcommittee? Yes, that's what I had certain concerns and reservations with respect to the concept of a subcommittee. Firstly, with, with respect to the feasibility and viability of a subcommittee, given the fact that we already have a board of directors and we are willing to appoint a director from your company to ours, given that there are only three people, there'll be three heads, they'll be together, and there's no preclusion from your director to discussing matters which fall outside the domain of financial management. Right. Of course, we always deliberate upon it, we always discuss it, because you mentioned that we have synergies to some extent. So we all can deliberate and discuss upon that. I don't feel there is a perfect, there is a need for a subcommittee. I think it's a little futile in, in my humble opinion, given the fact that there's no clarity who will constitute that particular subcommittee and what will be the constitution and under what provisions would that, would that be constituted, given that we already have a board of directors. That's yeah, what I mean. uh, just to clear the air around it, what he meant is that the board of directors would be appointed. It would be, say, a uh, extreme... Uh, say extreme load on one person to say look after the entire financials of the whole company who would be appointed from our side and since there would be a board of directors and say not in the capacity of an accountant or a business strategist or anything of that sort so uh, I think again say something like clear role division is what we can look into it say some uh, uh, what we were looking forward is a person appointed from our side in the board of directors would be dealing with uh, say all the decision making irrespective of say the financials regarding uh, whether financials will be will or will not be involved regarding the same. But say why we believe that the subcommittee would be much more beneficial is because uh, and, and even in the subcommittee say we can have more members or, or it can be a collaborative approach is what we believe in. It, 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 it can help us say brainstorm more. It can help have uh, additional synergies or additional expertise more on the subcommittee table, which can be effectively utilized and say uh, it, it can be used to cut down costs for the same industry. If I may just. So I had a counter offer in my mind, which will also Absolutely. take care of your concerns because Absolutely. you wanted certain experts to be there. So what we can do is we can keep the board of directors and we can consult externally, you know, all these CAs you mentioned, you want financial experts there. We can consult all of these people. So their opinions is also board, which after which the board can <laughs> deliberate upon it because it also has a director uh, belonging to AP, they can deliberate upon it. So the question of experts is also taken care of. Because once we get into the, you know, we get into the issue of subcommittee, then it will also be a burden of the companies. We have to make more employees and everything. It is already a provision for directors. I think that's essentially what directors are for in most of the companies. So I think that provision is already there. I see absolute futility in uh, looking for another subcommittee. I think uh, the question of experts is what I'm proposing. And what do you think about this? Yeah, I agree. Uh, okay. yeah. So you mentioned about um, having the same functions of the subcommittee, but asking them outside of the company. I mean, just to take their advice and expertise and then deliberate, deliberation and decision making would be there with the board itself, not with the committee, because they're not members of the board, they're not nominated members of the board. The because decision especially making after is. the risk that I undertook, and you rightly mentioned, I ended up paying much more tax than I was supposed to. I actually started consulting a lot of experts and a lot of people before making any decisions of this sort. And I think that what we can do after we finalize the board of directors is to make this consultation process formal. And we can include in the articles of association if all the parties so please. So that, you know, we have absolute clarity on the decisions that we're going to make. But again, we feel that the formation of a subcommittee is not something that is of priority as of now. And I think it can be dealt with later, given the paucity of time. I feel that we can move on to... Uh, agendas which are more important to both the parties if it may so please. yeah uh, absolutely and just to clear the air around the subcommittee for one last time before we move sure. on to the sure, other sure. issues what we meant is that say the board of directors who would be appointed to the board would not only deal with the financials right mm -hmm. you, you see we want a board of directors to be also involved actively involved in decision making for la wherein we can exchange expert synergies and have our experts also playing an active role in the board of directors of, of uh, LA. And regarding the subcommittee, it was again only regarding the financials of the company, where we can grow, where we can have better prospects and growth and the rest. And honestly, involving uh, people from outside without, you know, actually making them commit. Like when you create a subcommittee, you make them commit to you. Taking your important financial decisions outside for help 
I think we personally feel from experience and all, we feel it is a little risky, which is why we suggest a subcommittee. But as Sierra mentioned, we have a positive of time. So we can pass the issue. Just, yeah, we can pass the issue. But just if you have certain concerns with respect to confidentiality, however, I believe once you have the financial expert, there is Sierra, the am I am there, we can have multiple uh, opinions with respect to any subject at stake. So if there are questions, concerns with respect to confidentiality, that can be taken care of by a clause uh, which we can embed in the contract with when we, you know, when we take the advice of certain experts. However, since we see that there is paucity of time, we can agree that, first of all, <coughs> three members on the board, I think that's amenable. The question of experts, I think it can be dealt upon later. So more or less, there is an agreement to this effect. Now, uh, what about, uh, let's let's move on to the idea of the, um, yeah, please. I'm just so sorry. Please, please. Just before I move on, there's a there's a one particular point to discuss, which Definitely. is so closely related to that that it would we, we wouldn't do ourselves and yourself justice if we are not discussing sure. that. So I think uh, better as we were discussing before. Absolutely. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, the core of the board meetings is something that is um, setting for us, honestly, because uh, we now that we have two board members, I think uh, yeah, that issue we can. It, it will eventually be solved. So we had reservations regarding the quora, uh, the, the quorum of the board members is that we just had one representative from our side and you had two. And it, the clause was such that if any two of the uh, board members also attend the meeting, uh, it, it would be considered as, you know, it would be considered as a successful meeting. So we did not think uh, presently, we believe that that was not the just representation that we aspired for a company that we would be investing in. So if we are having an additional board of directors, uh, you know, uh, uh, keeping the subcommittee aside and the other nitty-gritties, I think that would be solved. Yeah, Again, we wanted want to clear you. the air around that too. Right, right. I totally understand better. However, the reason behind us maintaining that particular quorum is because there are certain decisions which are instrumental for the decision-making of AP. And say if one of these directors is not present or one of these directors is not able to make himself available, we do not want to stop or hinder the decision-making capabilities of the company. We do not want the company to suffer because of the absence of one particular person, which is why the quorum is set at two. Also, uh, I think Mr. Ben, could you explain how this is also in consonance with the share? Yes, if you look at the current share holding after the proposed share, uh, the post investment <laughs> shareholding structure is there, Miss Sierra has 45% of the shares. There's Miss One Rich Sudanson who's 20% of the shares, and there are multiple small investors who are 20% of the shares. And if this proposed invent, uh, this proposed investment goes through, then you're going to have 15% of the shares. So as you already know that there are only two board members at this moment, and there are multiple investors. There's Mr. Ranch Ranson and other investors who don't even have a board member in the first place. So I think we are first of all offering you, in spite of the fact that you only have 15% of shares. A board member position, first of all. And secondly, if you see that our shareholders have so much faith in Miss Sierra's com competence that they don't even bother to, you know, meddle in the day to day affairs of the particular company. And I believe adding, uh, you know, a, such a forum would impede the day to day affairs of the company. So I think it was, it is only the interest of the profitability, the interest of the both the parties in the larger scheme of things and we keep the quorum as it is as of this moment what do you think about that just yeah absolutely and i completely appreciate your inputs regarding the thing because this clears a lot of air. Mm -hmm. uh one thing miss ben uh, mr ben i would like to clarify is that say although there are other investors on board for la i don't think so any other investor is actually invested in the company as we are because say uh, it could be the other minority stakeholders or say even uh, Mr. Rich Blanson, right? They are just like any other uh, firm who are giving just the financial expertise for the firm. But as I mentioned, what I look forward in this firm is, is not just to make quick bucks and then move out and then be another any other private equity firm out there. I am a person who genuinely saw Ms. Tiara and who, who generally saw Ms. Sierra's vision for the company. So I believe that that is what is a differentiating factor from the rest of the board, rest of the investors and us. So that is why we believe that, uh, and especially when we are willing to help out and uh, you know give our expert financial synergies, in especially in the pharma industry, to you, we believe that it would be uh, safe, fair, or do justice to the expertise providing in the first place if it is not vetoed out. Right, or if it is not 
or if it is not uh, take, taken seriously. So that is the reason we wanted the subcommittee. And regarding, say, uh, as you mentioned, it might impede the day-to-day -day practices or say the day-to-day -day, uh, the day-to-day -day meetings of uh, the board that might have. I think we have few innovative solutions for the same. Say, uh, as you know, the pandemic has taught us how to go virtual, right? So one, one thing, one uh, say potential solution, what we thought of is that we can have virtual calls with uh, with both the with all the four directors, and then see uh, as to uh, we can have virtual meetings as well regarding the board of directors and and their meetings, and regarding <coughs> and regarding the meeting time or when when it will be scheduled. I think if the person is informed well in advance, I think all both the stakeholders that is LA and AP can take fruitful decisions for the working of LA and and not just say yeah. unilateral. And as Sarah mentioned, uh, you really did not want to, you know, um, sort of hinder or stop the decisions uh, regarding AP. If you, I, th I don't know if it was like a Patang or you generally named it. It was. <laughs> <laughs> because if we were like, if it was regarding AP, then AP must be there in the meeting. If you are taking decisions regarding it, it's okay. It's happens. So yes, just to answer your concerns. First of all, I'm conscious of the fact that you are so invested in the company, and I rather commend the fact that you are so invested in this particular uh, venture. So first of all, we are already treating you on a different pedestal than how we are treating our other investors because you have a member on the board, and none of the other investors have a member on the board. And coming to the more fundamental aspect of the quorum. First of all, let me tell you that since it is a new developing science, and let me be perfectly candid that this essentially is an atypical collaboration. Our very character is very different from what your character is, although you're trying to mend it. It's very different. So it's a new and upcoming and building synergy. So we are not essentially closing the window on the question of quorum, so that we won't give you your, uh, we won't increase the quorum to three. We're not closing the window on that. However, we are only saying that since it is only at its inceptive stage, Maybe you can discuss this issue at a later point when this deal goes through, when the investment goes through, when we develop new synergies. And then we can also discuss on the question of uh, the quorum itself. We can increase the quorum. There's no difficulty about it. But just the fact that it is still at a different stage, so that's why we have certain reservations. I hope you understand. Yeah. Also, Ms. Yeah. Sierra, you just mentioned that there will be four directors on the board. I'm so sorry. Was it a slip of time or was it Yeah, we, we wanted to increase the additional board of director that we will have. It would be independent of the already existing board of directors and the yeah. and I think my that, and that, that, that was cleared out, right? Yeah. So, uh, I'm sorry, I, I would still want to have a clarification as to how you're talking, which fourth director are we talking about? The, uh, say, the initially the fourth director that we wanted to appoint for the oh, right. financial oh. uh, expertise, but we wanted to come, and come up with a subcommittee for the same. I think, yeah, uh, as far as Mr. Ben, uh, I truly appreciate you know, the differential treatment that we get from the other investors on board. I think this is getting repetitive at this point that although we believe that there have been, uh, say, a rough patch that we have gone through as a company, but there are few non-negotiables that a company uh, has with its, uh, it could be with its business practices or with another company that it engages with. So if, uh, as Mr. Ben said, believes that we still don't have the established uh, synergies as in uh, where, where we you know we indeed wanted to lend a helping hand with regarding the same and if you if you don't believe in the same way as we believe in you i'm afraid this deal uh, say might not be as favorable or as uh, fruitful for both the parties uh, in in the discussion as we are talking today the fundamental for any deal what we believe is building of trust and although uh, say the products have been in a very nation stage we completely believed in the Sierra and came out with the uh, investment and not only in the tangible investment but also say investments with regard to expertise or using our personal networks or uh, uh, to distribute the same or where we are going that extra mile in order to say grow the company as LA and see the same vision as LA we also believe in you reciprocal creating the same with the same company that we have. So I totally understand your concern, Bella, and I would like to mention how we are extremely conducive and open to all that you're saying, which is why we are here at this negotiation table. If I come across very transparently and I, I am being very candid, 
I mentioned in the first statement itself that ESG standards and sustainable development are, are the issues that lie at the heart of our concern. You know, it's it's absolute truism that your company has has not had a very good reputation in that respect, and there have been multiple instances of the same. However, we were willing to let go of it for once after you decided to sign an MOU with us to the effect that you will not hurt animals during your research projects. And I believe that uh, letting go of that particular uh, blemish that you had on the reputation of your company, while you know considering ESG standards to be at the heart of our concerns, is something that should, I think, speak volumes about our commitment and our trust that we have in you. The thing is that in the previous meeting, you offered to have a board, have a director on our board, and I discussed that possibility with my counsel. Although we've never had this provision, we've never had to. You know, we never felt the need to include another person on the board, but you are one company that we trusted enough for us to, you know, even consider the possibility of having another director on the board. And since my counsel just mentioned that we are just in the very initial stages of our synergies, is because we've just started working together. You've just invested in us. We're just having one director on the board. Is what he meant by, you know, when he when he said that we are beginning to develop synergies. What he, he did not mean to say that we have not established synergies. He just meant that we are in the process of it. And if I may clarify, the quorum of meeting would be limited to two. Means that in case the third person is absent and there needs to be a decision on something extremely important, the other two members can go ahead with it. I mean, if you trust us, you should trust us to the extent that we would not deliberately create conditions for the third board member to be absent and then take decisions in his absence. So I believe that for now, we would like to have your member, your director on the board. And later on, as the synergies continue to develop, we can re revise the terms. We can probably think of having another director if the terms may seem feasible later on, or even uh, in increasing the capacity or the strength of the board at a later point in time. Um, all right. Uh, thank you so much for clarifying and you know explaining it so beautifully to us. However, I feel that we are um, reaching a paucity of time. Yeah. And uh, we would need to um, have, if, if that's okay with you, uh, we would, we are willing to have another negotiation session for the same, where we can discuss other issues that were not discussed today, and even, uh, at a, uh, you know, get more clarity on the issues that uh, were not uh, that clear today to any or any one of us. If that's okay with you. Definitely, I believe. Uh, first of all, given the fact that we have made significant headway during the course of this particular negotiation because first of all there was a question of investment of 45 million in return for 15 percent equity and there were some conditions precedent on which we had to decide so i would just summarize just before we end so that all which was dealt is taken care of first of all i believe the question of the practices which are taken care of, which hurt animals and which hurt the environment and you've very kindly agreed to enter into a memorandum of understanding that you're a company will not indulge in any such practices which hurt animals and only when it's a matter of life and death in only those extreme circumstances will so be the case first of all secondly with respect to patent rights we've told you that it is in the process of registration and the fact that we are willing to give you a warranty that it is it will be registered however we are still as i mentioned my difficulty with respect to the fact that the time is not clear as of this moment Coming to the management, you're very, we're very, we have agreed that you there will be a member of the board. However, we are not closing the door on the question of quorum or an additional board member. We have op always open to that idea. We came here with an optimistic frame of mind. We're always open to that. But at a later stage, when we develop the synergies in total and other issues which can be dealt in the future, cause as you mentioned, there is a possibility. Absolutely. Uh, and just just to summarize everything, I I do understand where Miss Sierra comes from, but uh, I do think that say when uh, when we do are you know are willing to help give that helping hand to you it would be uh, there would be no point of having the quorum if say the financial director is not involved in the financial decision made that day or anything of these situations wherein the very fact or the reason why we had such a clause or why this person was appointed to the board in the first place is itself lost so i don't think uh, that would actually be really beneficial to both of us but as Ms. mr ben mentioned i think we have we are far ahead from where we were in the morning and we have made significant progress and that is that is uh, some green flags that I think are to be
Right. Thank you, Ms. Bella. I think because of the paucity of time, I would like to take your question regarding the forum later on. Absolutely. Uh, I feel that we can talk about it since Absolutely. we begin negotiation. We can continue doing it at the time. Both the parties are extremely satisfied. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But again, I would like to thank you for coming here with an open frame of mind and putting across your concerns so comprehensively. I believe this was an important step towards building new synergies, and I hope we can continue this in the way forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bella. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Oh, I don't think my hand can reach so far. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Can I ask them who wants to take the question? Who wants to start with the question answer? They can leave. Yeah, whichever team wants to. Shall we leave? I brought it in the last and I had like subtly signified about the same like the same problem my council had like, in the starting, but it was not say as uh, pronounced as it should have been. And in the last five to seven minutes I brought it up that the whole purpose will be lost if the current is consistent. <laughs> it can consist can, can consist of any two of three members and they can go ahead and see. <laughs> I am. Um, I, I think you very well in staying silent during a very long introduction. You can tempt him to jump in, so I thought you did well in, in, in not jumping in next week. That was good. Um, did you think it was the right thing to do to start with what was clearly a very sensitive issue around the patents, albeit a very important one from your point of view? Um, you, you could have started with some, maybe some slightly more soft topics rather than actually it worked out and they, 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 they came back to you well. But I, I just wanted to, you thought there was a risk in jumping into that. Did you debate between you whether that was the right thing to do? Yeah, um, so basically we had decided that we would go on with the topic that matters to us the most. Because even though this is a collaborative deal, uh, the very likelihood of that depended upon that very uh, aspect of it. And uh, since we are also answerable to our shareholders, that was one of the very uh, things that we needed to get clarified. And because the other issues were very comprehensive, and we knew we anticipated a very comprehensive discussion on it, we just uh, had a few questions regarding the uh, patent uh, issue. So we went ahead with the question and answer. And we you did it's fair to say build the relationship and say some nice things which i thought was really good and really important um and, and so look i understand and it worked out so it was essentially a high risk strategy but it worked out perfectly but what do you think you've agreed do you think you've agreed on the patent issue because i'm not sure you've got what you think you might have got what do you think you've agreed uh, so good so basically um we agreed uh, on the warranty in an in principle. Uh, it was a very in principle agreement. We did not get into the nitty gritties of it. 
because we believe that uh, there was something. I think it was the time yeah. that was uh, yeah. wrong. Yeah. Ignore for the moment <coughs> exactly the drafting of the warranty. And I thought we did quite well. talked about ownership. We talked about you know what, what it would cover. We, we need to cover all the right things. So I, I thought you did well on that. So, so but ignore for a moment the wording of the warranty. But what about the question of timing? Timing, yeah. Uh, I yes, think sir. we did certainly ask for a ballpark figure from them regarding the time. <coughs> like when would we we be receiving the documents or when would we yeah. will, we, will it be by the end of this deal or not? I so think we, I mean what I heard you say is that it was going to take a long time. So that was regarding the approval of the patent if I'm not wrong and say the documents and other preliminary uh, applications that they have been made, they told they would transfer the same by the end of the session. But You've only got the comfort, they've only got the comfort that, that, um, that they have the patents which are critical to this product at the time they are formally registered. Right. So, do, do, are you planning to sign this deal before they've got that? Uh, definitely not, because I think it is. Uh... It, it is like the likelihood of the deal is dependent on that very issue. So even if we agreed on a principal level, we wouldn't have signed the deal unless and until we have done it. Our lawyers like. But let's say it's going to take six months, uh, and your share price is going south. Yeah. And you've got a lot of criticism in the market and things. Can you think of a solution you could come up with? To um, maybe yeah. Maybe we could have uh, made uh, them indemnify us. In any way, like if there is something disputed about the patent in uh, in the process of the deal making, or even after that, uh, so and uh, just just adding on to like what she said, say we could also say could have delved into the PR strategies, say that we are in active talks with uh, LA and we might have uh, uh, we, we might have a deal so far, and that would uh, say help with. You think they'd be happy to? Um... To, to make this public? Not necessarily, but yeah, we, we, we could have. Not necessarily. Yeah. So they've got no security of, of an investment from you, and you're putting out an ad or want to put out an announcement to the world that we're thinking of investing in them. And you're yeah. a big, bad pharma company. Yeah. And they're the, you yeah. know, the ESG angels. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they're going to agree to that. But, but, I, but I understand that. Can you think of a different um, contractual solution? What we could, uh, I think, uh, MAE or something, we could have read upon that. MAE. What's that? Material like, like, If there's anything that happens in the future that uh, that is regarding the patent and if it uh, affects us in any ways, now we could have dealt with the contractual uh, terms later, exact months later, but if it affects us in any way, they would, or a simple indemnification process from them. Or uh, say they would have to deal with it. That is the reason we yeah, asked them as to what is the likelihood of they getting the patent in the first place. Or yeah, no, I understand. It's, so it's all no. practical steps. Look, I think what I had in mind was it, it might be sensible, actually, from both parties, that they could exchange and sign the agreement, but that the agreement is conditional on the facts being. Patent. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so that's just it. Can I, can I just test when you sort of suggested the solution of an indemnity? How do you think that would work in this so, context? So uh, basically, we would agree to. Um, obviously, uh, we don't know about the patent situation, about how much will it cost. But let's say we would have just to minimize uh, the cost that would that would come on us in the future. We would have decided on some ballpark figure uh, after doing some. Uh, it is an estimation, and then we would have uh, told them to identify, or we could have kept it even open ended, like an amount decided by whatever amount you see. So, you, 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 you are saying that effectively, you put in the money uh, without the patents, and if the patents don't come through, then you will ask them to ask them to pay you back. That, is that what you're saying? That's, uh, that's how I think the indemnity probably would work. But I'm just trying to understand from you what you yeah, how it works. Yeah, but again, that would be, say, the last resort that we would go for. As mentioned, the entire likelihood of the deal, what we mentioned, was based on the patent. And I think we must have delved into the nitty gritty. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
The way in which I see this is absolutely, you know, great capacity with the motor vehicle. I see that largely you have succeeded in the industry. You have broadly made a campus that these are the sections that will be quite as issues. But somehow do you think that you have missed one very important point? And that question is why are you making this investment? To be, yeah. yeah, because we are a big company and we have got some uh, lashes from the public. And honestly, we believe that they are such a nascent uh, startup and, and they have all the positives that we don't have. So basically, to partner with them, to offset that. And also, uh, they have new inventions. And we've been a very conservative uh, uh, We have been uh, lashed out because we don't uh, make new inventions. So basically, just to offset us. And whatever bad, we, whatever uh, negative uh, image we had to offset that. Uh, and in addition to that, say, uh, instead of, uh, say, coming up uh, with the same amount of investments, we as a, com we as a company coming up with another novel uh, invention or coming up with uh, other associated practices that Ms. Sierra had would, would have been, say, more... Uh, Say the thoughts consuming that investing in a company that that and also we were looking for I'm so sorry we were looking to um, acquire a similar company yeah and uh, merge them both to you know increase profitability but uh, we we were anticipating some restrictions from their side but luckily they, clause, yeah but well, uh, luckily they did not touch upon it. so that aspect of it was not supposed to come. And what benefits they would be driving by I think financial. the yeah, and yeah, one would be the financial. Uh, they will be getting money from again. Again, we would not be uh, money and what kind of money and expense <coughs> from a power company that would be investing in their uh, form because say when we have invested our money, we would say uh, our our expertise and other resources would also trickle down to them and they would they would basically get an easy way or the golden ticket to the gateway in if they had. Got to independent investors or equity firm, uh, sorry, venture capitalists, and then uh, say gather all the money. It's both the expertise and the financial. Uh, and it's the management. Uh, I think we're just an investor. Why should we get into the management? Because we have future plans of acquiring them and then. Yeah. We wouldn't want to right now. Okay, so <laughs> if then, we would not like even both of us have a. Do you think? Do you think that in your opening statement, rather than capital P coming to pay rent, you should have given them the perspective about their benefits by entering into the, the relationship? Would that make some difference in terms of trust? Um. It would have which may be which may be besides the financial part, the all the solution that your presence yeah. in the market. So that's it. Uh, yes. that not be uh, the, the right thing to start. Yeah, when we think it that way, yeah, because we must have first stated the say the advantage is that they are getting out of us than we also getting out of them. Uh, but but we did think that that would say uh, Set off on the wrong foot and said we started off say with that we, we do value your company and we do acknowledge the amount of valuation you do to our company as well. Uh, but we mentioned it in the later stages, but say something like a patent is something we wanted to do. And we did not want to sound too bossy because we did have these uh, these statements like you know you subtle statements that you're benefiting from us. They're benefiting from us. We wanted to save them for this actual negotiation and to, you know, start mentioning them in the opening statement as well. I mean, I do understand that. And they've left today, and clearly you were never going to reach agreement on different issues today. There was never going to be one time. But I do think what was important about those meetings was for you to have been able to list the items, all the items, and actually, the, the items that were needed for this meeting are much more on your side. Yeah. So I think it's incumbent on you to have put a few strains because you, you, right at the outset, you, you said that you've got some 
you know, absolutely critical ones, you've got primary ones, you've got secondary ones, you know, the, 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 the third items, they were never raised. And he, he absolutely should, within that hour, have said, look, before we leave today, we must at least have headlines. Because they've now left thinking they're practically there. So I'm looking forward to this next meeting because we're almost there. Right, so I, I think that's a really significant point. And, and then just on the question of, you sort of dived in on the sort of, you wanted this committee and things. Actually, I think it would have been much more effective to just stand back a bit and say, look, look there are questions of governance here. All right. How's the board going to operate? How many directors are going to be on the board? Are there going to be any reserved matters for shareholders? You deal with the whole thing in the round because you got lost in a sort of detailed stuff around committees and things. And, and there's a danger, I think, in all negotiations that when you get into details, then you do start and, and you lose sight of really what you're trying to achieve. Um, because I, I think there's a whole bunch of stuff where you, I think, you can ask legitimately yeah. for some protection. Um, but but um, you know, they're just thinking, what they care about is some committee. And actually, the board's going to make the decision and will ignore the recommendation of the committee. You know, you, you're, you haven't got what you want. I, I think, but for me, the overall impression is is, is that you, you, you lost an equality of bargaining. I think the danger for me is that, that because you were so focused on what they were going to bring you, you forgot that you were a 40, 60 billion dollar company. All right? You were a serious company. Yeah. All right? And, and you can bring a lot to them. And, and because you started becoming defensive, and, and, and the fact that the the word for slipped out was a disaster. Well, the, 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 the direct, the extra director, <laughs> if you suddenly oh, mentioned the four, and, yeah. and with the four directors, have never having raised it before. Yeah, you said, we well, just want one extra director. Yeah. They very sensibly said, hang on a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did, did I hear correctly? Yeah. Was it a slip yeah. of the tongue? Yeah. And you went, uh, no. <laughs> you know, that's the worst way to get someone. You know, you need to be on the front foot. This is about governance. This is how many people want on the board. This is about forum things. This is about running things properly. I think she meant the total number of directors, two from their side, and after this uh, initial agreement, two from our side. No, so I know what you no, meant no, later. We, we, we you don't ever raise one. Yeah, you don't ever raise one, and then the four just slip that. So, 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 you know, and that starts to destabilize a negotiation. And I actually felt that at that stage the relationship started to feel you were close, and then I felt things had broken down and maybe rescued. I think both sides rescued right at the end. Um, but but the, the, the relationship, you know, uh, had started to, to, to break down. I think. You know, negotiations go through stuff like that. Yeah. You're getting on well, you hate each other, you're getting on well. <laughs> you know, all that stuff. Yeah. 
because the Danish will probably insist that let's at least put them on the table and then we can deal with them. Yeah. That would have at least given the headline right at the very beginning. Like, this one is extremely easy. Because at the meeting time, I don't know why it will be carried over to the meeting time. But it should not be in a scenario where it, it appears that those are not issues at all for you. Who oh, was that deliberate talking about not to mention on this issue because you thought if I mentioned too many issues, it would sort of stop. Yeah, it would be over well. We, we thought honestly, first the likelihood that, that is the absolute issue. That is one issue that we come to the table with and we want to settle it out. After that, the primary issue we had, actually we did discuss two of the sub issues under that. But since I, I was mentioning it in one, or in my opening statement, I was like, I don't want to confuse them. I don't want to waste further time and you know, clarify, oh my God, I, I wanted to mention this, that. So I said, maybe the first issues, four sub points we can deal with later. And secondly, and tertiary issues are something that we can do. They were also- And when it was Ben on the other side, very good at summarizing. Um, and I know he summarized three times and then you sort of took over one from me and then to summarize again. So why didn't you, did you not raise at that time that there were more issues that we may need to talk about? Did you, did you think about that or there was something not happening about Sorry? I think you, you, you were summarizing the, yeah. in the end. Uh, uh, so, uh, you were summarized, so Ben summarized very well the issues from at the end. So yeah. where we landed. And you missed an issue, which is quite a tough But then you summarized what you thought was the provision. But you did not bring in the, for the next meeting. There are these other secondary tertiary where the physiology is Did you did you have a, a thought about that as to why you did not summarize? Or you, you, you yeah, paucity of time. Of time. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we also wanted to let them speak because it would be like, oh, we're just ending it on our note, we're just speaking it and the timer hit when they did not get a chance. I think it's a little bit about that. I think it's a I think with the start we had, we did not want to um, spread and, uh, you know, uh, pass an impression that we were very selfish and we were just here for our friends. Because we, we also valued them and uh, just by, you know, starting with I, the I, I, I think on a number of the points, you could have made it uh, a, a, a joint benefit. So, I mean, on ESG, for example, you know, that, that you, you, know, you are a company starting to think differently um, and and you could have said look we want to find a way to, to start changing things with you and you, you will provide it you know a great impetus in this but for you as a 60 billion uh, dollar company to be saying basically we're going to change all our policies for you and we're just sticking to you know we're going to get 15 percent of you tiny little investment yeah, that, yeah. and and they sort of, and so I think on each of them, you know, you, you, you could have explained actually many, many of the points, you know, whether it's governance, we can really help on this, we want, we want to grow together on this. Um, I think my Bella, um, I think Bella wanted, she just used that as a big guy because we were under a backlash from the media as well for uh, not being ESG compliant. So she took that point and she uh, sort of told them that, oh, it's because of you we are doing that. But I think it was just because of our negative media attention. Have you agreed to signing an MOU? We did not no, agree. No. So, say, what I heard you agreed to signing an MOU. Uh, on that regarding the animal testing, I mean, yeah, say that, that would also be indicative of that we are also shredding our, uh, say, conventional practices of okay. having so, conventional so, so, so what do you think this MOU is meant to do? So you're a yeah. sensible little company, you're just in front of a small company that we to sign an MOU, which applies to your entire 60, 60 million dollar business. So what do you think you'll actually agree there? Um, that we would, yeah. Honestly, um, we were already taking a lot of efforts, you know, uh, cutting down on all the environmentally unsustainable things that we did. <coughs> so I don't think Signing, I don't think we really uh, agreed on signing the MOU. I mean, we, we although, say, although we did uh, say agree on that, but I don't think so. Say that was the motivation behind we shedding our own values. We did mention that we are mending our ways, and one of the indicators of the same is investing as an ESG compliance. 
stop me as you are. And then just just that's just assuming that you did uh, the time and then you, you have a policy, you didn't need that policy to agree to something like that for a company of that because you're fundamentally changing the nature of how you can operate from a new super like Is that something which is an important decision that needs to that you have authority to agree to? Or the Zami will only confine to this particular region. You can not even say that. So the way in which I understood it is that the MOU was only for this particular region. Oh, I, 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 I don't think. That's yeah. not what they agreed. So I'll uh, take what, so what I think. So initially, so yeah. was the yeah. In fact, they said whatever we do, collaborate with people. Yeah. So that no one will Yeah, that's what I That's yeah. what they said. Yeah. So, yeah. so we get you know, the benefit of how can be given here. But then I have a basic question right now. You started with the patent. What if, and they responded that no representation qualities. In fact, they came to your rescue by saying that reps and qualities were given. Yeah. And they said that no reps and qualities. This is what is the, the status. Then what would have been your response? Because that was the, the, the critical uh, part as far as the whole negotiation is concerned. So we would take their uh, disagreement. It was a deep breaker, in fact. Yeah. yeah. So can you start your discussion with a deep breaker point? So uh, and as far as and it is a deep breaker as well, it, it is say, the fundamental reason why we are buying them. Say, if, if the particular technology is not protected by that particular IP, then we would just be in, uh, yeah. we would just be in high. And adding to that, honestly, we would, if they would disagree for a warranty, we would take that as their confidence in their IP. And then we would move on to discuss something like indemnification or other uh, items we would have explored. Is there anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. On time, I think it would be helpful because I think we took 20 minutes. Is that right? Yes, sir. Are you able to put up a 20? I think it would just help us. If you could, yes. yes. Yeah. I was thinking how long would be 10 minutes. Yeah. I think it should be 10 minutes. It should be 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes each. Okay. Okay, I was thinking it was 20 minutes. How long do we take that interest? Did anyone time it? 26, I think. 26 or a long time. Uh, I think it's probably okay because you're kind of combining it to an end of the feedback session. Yeah. So maybe overall time might be okay. Or is it to get a camera? Yeah. Okay. I, I think why don't, why don't we do this? I, I think. Um, so I think well, yeah, please take a seat. Okay. No, I, I what I'd like to do, are you able to put up twenty minutes on, on a countdown basis like you did? Yeah, do, please do that. Sir, so basically, where we believe that we were not the ones who were actually in the budget, we didn't have a seat of funding, and uh, the other party had primary concerns. But since sorry, had received your funding, who did you receive your funding from? We received the funding from the other party. But they haven't agreed to deal with it. They have agreed to find us. They have already agreed to provide yeah, that subject to all the subject to the contract. Yes. So they haven't agreed. Yes, so, sir, if I may. Yes. Sir, our basic goal while going into this particular negotiation was to first of all secure the negotiation while not compromising on the Articles of Association and everything we stand for, which is embedded in the Articles of Association, which was the ESG standard which we maintain and which we hold in very high regard. So, all these things we were trying to be very accommodative because of a reason. 
because we were we not to let go this particular investment which was very crucial for our survival so this particular investment was very crucial so that is why when we they propose a certain thing when we had certain reservation for example they proposed the question of quorum we had certain reservation because it was mentioned clearly in the ci that we would resist that so we resisted that by countering them by saying if you want some experts then why not let's have some experts so we countered them that way otherwise we try to propose a more uh, less everything uh, counter offer them you know so that our interest don't get budged in the middle apart from that the I'm question is pretty tough right. and you maintained and, and and the flip side of this is that they were slightly too defensive but, but it's it's not always in your interests to win all the points yes and it, and it felt like the core point was something that you were just difficult, difficult, difficult. And I was getting worried, and worried, that if you're not careful, the deal won't happen. Yes. If the deal doesn't happen, what? Yes. Understood. No. If the deal doesn't then, happen... Then we don't get the investment, which is I, against... I think... I think um, we don't get the investment. And? And uh, we go out of business. Pretty... Yes. Yeah, it's, it's existential. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there were times where you were being too tough yes. and they were allowing you to be too tough and sometimes it's then difficult for you to almost rein back yourself but I felt like you should have reined back yourself because you were in danger of not having a deal. Yes. So taking that into consideration if I may give it, I get two minutes. First of all, uh, talking about uh, the the point of being too rigid. So first of all, as I'll go by the agenda by agenda and say what was in my mind and in our mind while we were going through the negotiation. Coming to the first point, which was with respect to animal testing. Why we were so keen on that? Because you know this thing in our confidential which uh, confidential information sure. okay. yes. that, that's fine. I, I'm just giving it as an example of yes. the question. You dug your heels in yes. in a way that they're thinking we're not going to win any points here because everything is painful. I, I just um, I, I just feel that, that there was an issue there. And then I just raise another point, and then my colleagues will raise things as well. Pretty early on, they um, said to you, we've got, we've got this critical point on patterns, which didn't come as a surprise to you, but I thought yes. you, you were open, and actually you were constructive yes. on the yes. space. I'm not sure you reached an agreement that we understood, but, but that's fine. Um, but, but they, they talked about um, primary points, secondary points, um, and, 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 and tertiary points, and, and, and tertiary points as well. Even though they didn't come back to listing them, uh, it, it feels like, given how important it was to, to secure a deal, to enable you to secure funding, that you should have said, before we leave today, we at least need to know what the headlines are. So you left this meeting having discussed really three points, okay? And you're then thinking, actually, we're pretty close to a deal. Whereas they're thinking, all of these issues we haven't raised them, it's, it's, it's not ideal. Okay. So, so, if I may. Yeah, please. So basically, when we look at our agenda list, Mostly, our agendas are mostly in response to their agenda. Yes. For example, if I talk about publicity point, they yeah. wanted us to publicize the fact that we were, we were collaborating with them. Why we did not want it because that would have brought us negative parts. Yeah. Similarly, they want us to get into an ex exclusive agreement with them wherein we sell our product only to them. In response to which we would have told them, and they're not enemies with them. Yeah, I, I agree. Most of the agenda items are on their side. They told you they had a whole bunch of agenda items that you never got to. Okay. All right. So, so given that floating out there in the ether is their reference to these other items, okay. and in a perfect world, they should have raised it. Because this deal is so critical to you, you should not have left the room until you knew what the, at least what the issues were. Okay. If I may. Please. Uh, so first of all, they always had the bargaining chip that they can pull out of the deal with them. However, they never chose to use that particular bargaining chip. They had that. They gave us an impression throughout 
that they're willing to negotiate. They're willing to negotiate, they're open to ideas. So we were also under the impression, for example, if you have this particular interest of have retaining control in the company, then why not retain that? If they're also responding to that, if they had a particularly different stance with respect to that, or they were too rigid, we were all amenable to being flexible. So that was only in response to what they proposed. And that is precisely the reason why we were being sort of rigid because we were getting our way. They had the bargaining chip, but they refused to choose, uh, use that, is what we feel. Can I add to this? I'm agreeing with you. You were getting your way. And look, that's a risky, Understood. risky tactic. Understood. Uh, it, 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 when this is absolutely existential, you know, you could have gone, they could have gone, yes. they could have, look, almost everything you've discussed is, you know, they are, they are so difficult. All we're doing is sticking a uh, tiny uh, minority investment in this company. Actually, they're asking us to change all our global policies. This is too difficult. You know, it, it, it's a nice to have. I think we'd be better off just changing our ESG policies separate to them. Otherwise, you know, this woman's going to be running our company if we're not careful. So just think, you, 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 you need to remember at the end of the day is that you have no, no fallback plan. Understood. No fallback plan. Understood. All right. Okay. So, sir, if you remember, at the end of the negotiation session, we had actually five points and we were able to discuss in this particular session three points. It was them who proposed that we will sit in another negotiation session coming forth. So, they did not close the door on us and neither did we. When they were proposing something, we said, we are open to the idea of quorum, but let's develop a relationship first. So, that's what we proposed. And neither did they close the door on us. Had they been closing the door on us, and had they been using that bargaining chip, we would have had a slightly different stance. We would have been, as you suggested, it would have been slightly more, uh, you know, flexible in our approach. But given that how the other side was responding and everything, we analyzed that situation and then we acted accordingly. I think that that, that is the whole point of a smart negotiation, in my humble opinion. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am, please. Yeah. 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 No, ma'am. So, ma'am, you will notice. You're doing it now. <laughs> You're doing it now. You, you obviously have a style that means you are reluctant to say there's a different way. No. Just, <laughs> if I may, I don't know. You need to listen to what we're saying, okay? You, you, obviously, you, you're obviously a, a talented guy and a clever guy and you have a clear vision as to the right way to do these things we've all got a different view as to how to do these things and and, and sometimes you just need to say okay i can see a different one yes. 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 Definitely, there were some points in there. I have a couple of more points. Yes. You started your discussion with animal testing. You started your discussion with ESG. Fortunately, they have not countered you. In fact, out of the ESG framework, you miserably failed in G part. You are you have demonstrated yourself as a you know as an organization who's having absolute financial industry. That's the reason why you're in the And in animal testing also. What have you achieved by 
we have achieved something with regard to this particular venture, which is being controlled by the Yazis 15 percent They have not stated that they would not be doing any investment. In fact, they said that no, they will continue to do that. Mm -hmm. And this MOU is only with regard to our own company, where you are controlling the uh, organization. So what, what benefits you have driven from a point which you have raised and consistently raised and very, very aggressively you raised that? What benefit you have driven? Why you were in financial difficulties? You would be banked up. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. So from the entire conference invitation, as I previously mentioned, that most of the agenda were oriented towards them. I mean, they had to put forward the agenda and we had to uh, talk about it. This was one thing, this was an our agenda, this is something that we could have asked them up front. And our confidential information clearly mentions that a lot of our employees, including our chief scientists, would have chosen to leave this company had the other company not stopped its animal testing services. Although you didn't raise that point. Uh, because they, they agreed to stop uh, animal testing without us having to bring that policy. We did not want to show that we have a part. And in case they do not succumb to that, we will have. It's not, I don't think it's your it's weakness. It's, 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 it's in their interest <coughs> to know that the, the person who's actually responsible for the technology is, if we're not careful, we're losing. This is, this is not in your interest, it's not in our interest. So right. let's find a way to keep not only him happy, because he's absolutely critical to us, but let's find a way through all of this that is going to help and support you. We recognize, I mean, I think I, my starting book, we recognize you're a $60 billion company, that you can't suddenly, on day one, change all of your ESG policies. I think, you know, and that's, you know, you, 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 you know, you, you're, you're trying to, you know, it's a bit like me rocking up with Bill Gates and saying, look, you know, I don't like the way uh, your windows work. So I think it needs to, it needs to change a bit. I just think you just have to remember that that, um, that whilst you bring some really attractive things to them, if they don't do this deal, they're going to just carry on. They're 60 billion. It, it, it will, you know, maybe there'll be some bad, bad press release and all the rest of it, but they're carrying on. You're dead. All right? You are dead. All right? And, and you were thinking, actually, we're winning all of this, and so let's let's just keep beating them. And and sometimes it's a very very difficult thing to do when you are winning in that way to uh, have the self control to have the knowledge to pull it back. It's a difficult thing to do because it's lovely winning points, but but the danger is you you you, you win the battle and you lost the war, right? and you're winning. Great danger of losing. If, if you were asked to, after this negotiation, go back to, let's say, your bigger share of the life, which went, I need to report this back, can you, in two minutes, summarize to me, as a movie artist, right, what have you uh, achieved on this negotiation and where you stand as a company? Because I have been up to a lot of money in the company, uh, so I want to understand what you have achieved. In two minutes, either of you, can you summarize where we are? Yes, so sir, so, sir, first of all, as you rightly pointed out, that the question of investment was very essential. For example, they had the opportunity to close the door of us, and they, yes, that, that was there, that precarious yeah, situation yeah, was. I'm just asking to summarize to me. Yes. I have not been part of the negotiation. Yes. I have no idea what's happening in the meeting. Yes. Did the meeting go well? Yes. Did yeah. the meeting go well? Yes. Tell me so, I'll minutes. go agenda wise. Coming to the first agenda, which was that of the Chief uh, Scientist Mr. Alexander Lemming leaving, leaving in possibility we contract with the other. No, 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 no. I'll pause you again. Yes. I have no idea what's happening in the mm. meeting. I have no idea about the mm. conversation. Mm. I have no idea about the chat. Mm. Okay. You meet me over three. I'm at the bar. Yes. And I ask you the question. How did your meeting go? Have you secured the investment? Okay. And now you have two minutes to explain to me because I'm a busy man. I'm going to walk out of this bar in exactly two minutes. As of now, I haven't secured the investment. So you do to spend yes, as of now, I'm in the process of securing the investment. The work is in progress, and the work is in progress. First of all, they've also suggested another meeting to go through. First of all, there were five agendas on the list. 
We discussed the three of them. Two of them are left with respect to publicity, and they had an op option of, you know, uh, they wanted to build an exclusive agreement of selling. So that those two agendas are left. Otherwise, the three agendas which were discussed. Did you table all the points that um, that you wanted to, and do you think you managed to um, air all of the points that they wanted to raise? In other words, do, do we know what you're going into in the next meeting? Are you confident? I think uh, in the beginning, I tried to lay down the agenda, the points which they also wanted to discuss, because we essentially did not want much from them apart from the investment. So they were their concerns. We wanted to address them in the beginning. So that's what we were seeking to do in all humility. And ma'am, just to answer your concern with respect to being fair, uh, ma'am, I understand. I completely understand and acknowledge that being fair is more important rather than, you know, um, in, in indulging only your interest. So I'll just add two points here. In the beginning, so you'll see. You want to summarize to me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I will. I will do that, and then I'll move ahead to that question. So uh, the first question of you being my shareholder, and I explaining to you that there were five agendas. I wouldn't done with three of them. First problem with investment that is in progress. Second question of our chief scientist leaving that is taken care of because we had certain concerns with the practices of animal testing because a chief scientist was a person who would leave had they continued to indulge in animal testing. So we are out of that situation. We have secured our chief scientist, which is very essential for the company and essential because of the fact that um, chief scientist is essential because only then we can launch the project product at the end of the day. Because if he leaves at this point, we can't launch the project. And then the whole company, as uh, the lack of investment would do to our case, the whole company would collapse before, uh, because the work isn't still in progress. So you discussed that, with Alexander? Yes. Uh, where you got to? Is he happy? Is he staying? I hope I will after the meeting. You will after the meeting, yes. or you just assured us that you, there's no problem. Yes. yes. So uh, I discussed this with Alexander. And oh, we have discussed that before, before, <laughs> but before. Right. Wherein he expressed to yeah. me, wherein he expressed to me his yeah. opinion with respect to the other company. So he's a man, man, a man of principle. I think he's a man of principle, and that's the reason why he said that he won't be associated with a company who indulges in animal testing. And that is why we wanted to bring for that particular So you point. think you've got them to agree to, to have no animal testing ever again, other than, I think they used the word, that if it was existential, yes. 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 So, so the, I mentioned that Alexander publicly opposes AP's animal testing regime. LA should seek to persuade AP to commit to reducing animal testing where it was. As they said, they only do it. They only do it when it's a matter of death and life. I think we could not have gone beyond this, and we could not have secured a better deal as regards animal testing. Do you think your MOU covers their global business? Their MOU uh, concerned the business as long as they were associated with us. Well, but I think so. I got here. Uh, I think when you you yes. is that you sign an MOU, and that will only cover mm -hmm. stuff which is in relation to our collaboration. That, to my mind, is just what you're doing rather than applying to the global scale. Is that, is that correct or, or not? So first of all, uh, there's no question of animal testing insofar as our company is concerned because we would never indulge in such a practice, given that we have a majority shareholding and they only have 15%. So there is no question of collaboration and in our collaboration wherein there would be animal testing. So the fundamental question which was across the table, which was understood was with respect to their company. And that is what we put across that your company will end up stop doing that because it was their practice in the first place. So that was what we asked them to agree on. Okay, well, we can tell you, we have to grill them. They think the MOU only relates to your business. I, I think there was not a meeting of mine, but I specifically. Yeah, there was not a meeting of mine. There was, yes. there was lack of communication. Before we started, I think they took away something different. Hmm. And we, we also yeah, understood. Hmm. understood taking into consideration. Mm -hmm. Um, 
what was the thinking when this was in the book right on your side? It is you, basically, who was very agitated. You picked it up. Well done. Good. So, was there some sort of thinking and that when you started to when you were taking notes in between from that point of view? So, sir, if I may just clarify what your question is, that when they brought in the aspect of the fourth director. So, you're talking about fourth composition, the agreement that there'd be one factor. Yes. From then, then they came up with the suggestion of having a committee which is more high. And then somewhere in the middle, they just slipped in a fourth director, having a fourth director, which you picked up. Yes, sir. Uh, was there some sort of discussion whilst you were thinking about that? Yes, sir. So, for, so first of all, we had come. Uh, in the negotiation with the strategy that we will be offering them one position of a director in this particular company. However, we were aware of our situation that if they don't invest in our company, we would be rendered basically out of the business. So we did not close the door on that. We said that, yes, we are willing to consider your option. Even the, on the question of forum, we are willing to consider. First, let's develop this because we do not want to give away uh, it just like Phoenix. We, we so, so, I, so, so I'm going to say something slightly different. You know, there are times where I think it is fair to be up with the other side. I think them suddenly slipping in this reference to full mm -hmm. director was such a time. Because actually, you know, you're only going to make progress in mm -hmm. discussions when you know exactly what their position is. I think you could have just said, as you said, was, was that a slip of the time or something? Mm -hmm. and, and they said, no, 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 we, we, we did want to. I think you could have just paused and said, well, hang on a minute. Uh, we've been having a discussion for 15 minutes, 10 minutes about four and all the rest of it. Now you bring this fourth director. I think you could have actually been firm with them on that. So I asked them whether they talked about the fourth director, and they said that they, in a hypothetical scenario where uh, we would have disagreed the proposal of having a committee on this, they would have proposed. So what they literally told us as a response to my question was, so they were talking about that hypothetical scenario which they were about to propose, but they didn't because they weren't willing to have the staff committee on Which is why I was like, okay, I mean, since they did not put it forth as a proper agenda, I did not really substantiate. Look, we, we've been delivering trouble with you. We would tell them as well. So, so a lot of time, it's a uh, it, 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 it's, 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 we can give a little bit more out of feedback, but actually, but both both sides do talk incredibly well. Uh, we, we know that you had to you know, prepare for this stuff overnight, or certainly work in person at school. You need to do so. So, I think the idea now is that, is that the judges retire to do the marking and then yes. we reconvene in this room. Sure, sir. Is that right? To, sure. to um, or, or do we have the uh, do we to make a bit of a scene group now, or do we straight go to? The... So it's up to your discretion. Okay, but then I can go. Yeah, we go straight to the the, the, the closing ceremony and the announcements and everything else.